Are you looking for some track lighting to enhance one of your rooms? Or maybe you're looking for under cabinet lighting that's flexible and easy to place. What about one that is expandable up to 33 feet and is compatible with both Alex A and Google Home? Well, then you're in the right place. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Casa Smart Light Strip Multicolor, as you can see right here. TP-Link has been a long favorite of mine for smart home devices, and the LED light strip I've actually had my eye on for quite some time. One being that, well, it's ridiculously simple to set up. Two, easily expandable. And three, doesn't give you a lot of the extra features that people just throw in to say, hey, we've got extra features. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the box itself, you get two segments of the LED light strip and a controller box with plug. That's it. There's nothing else that you get with this. This is a smart home device, not just an LED light strip. So there is actually a ridiculously simple setup process, which we'll take a look at now. This will be the setup for the Casa Smart Light Strip Multicolor. So step one, you open up your Casa app after you create an account if you don't have one already. You come up to the upper right hand corner, select the plus sign, and then you're going to select device. What are we going to do? Well, we have to try and find what it is. So in our case, it's smart light. Well, here we go. Smart light strip, smart light strip, and then smart light strip. Each of these has a unique name. So here you have the KL400, the KL420, the KL430, and KL430E. Now, in our case, we are actually doing the K430. So we select on this, and now it's telling us, connect all the parts, hit next, all right, so it's saying now we plug in. So in my case, I'm gonna flick my power switch over here. So it says wait 15 seconds for the thing to start flashing orange and green, which it's kind of doing. So we're gonna say next. Now it wants us to connect to the Wi-Fi network that this has created. So I'm gonna select next and bring this off camera for a moment. All right, it wants us to choose our Wi-Fi network. I already have my login credentials there, so I'm gonna select join it actually connected. So it wants me to give this a name. So we're just going to call this TP link light strip. Select next. It wants us, and I'm gonna move these out of frame because those are really bright. It wants us to pick an image for these. So I'm just gonna leave it on the light strip indicator there. Got lots of choices to choose from. You can pick something from the album, take a picture of it. We're gonna leave it as is for now. Now it's got a mounting guide so we can either skip this or say get started. I'm gonna say show me the mounting guide. So here it's talking about scissors can be used to cut the light strip to any custom length. You're gonna connect, which we kind of already did, but you can connect your segments because there's a secondary uh, segment, which you'll see a little later, but there's another segment right there. And then letting you know where it is safe to actually cut and then peeling the 3M tape off of the back of your LED strip. And then here is your control module which also has a little 3M behind it. And then we're gonna select all set and congratulations, you're done. So we go, sounds good. And now as with many things, there is an update that must be done. And actually just two minutes later, the update is complete. As you saw, ridiculously simple to set up. Powering and controlling this LED light strip, you get a control box with a just shy of six foot cable, as well as a power brick right here. That's a little on the chunkier side and has only a 19 inch cable. To me, uh, this is one of the shortcomings for this particular LED light strip combo because it just doesn't feel like between the controller box and the power source, there's enough actual room because you have to have your power source 19 inches away from the controller box. Because if you're not going to be using the app or voice commands via a different system, uh, this might be a little bit on the shorter side. It is not a total deal breaker, but I just want you to be aware of that shortcoming, no pun intended. Here we have the controller box. This is going to act as the Wi-Fi access point for the LED light strip so that you can do all the fancy things that you can do with it. But as far as the controller box goes, you just have your power port up there for the plug and then the part that attaches to your LED light strip. There's a big button on the front of it, which just you press and it turns the LED light strip on. You press again and it turns the LED light strip off. There's no double tapping to cycle through any of the functions of the light strip. It's a simple on off. On the back of this, you do have two 3M sticky areas that you can affix this to a wall if you wanted to. But 
we're gonna move down to our light strip. For starters, with our LED light strip, you get a 3M adhesive sticking on the back of it, as well as each of the junction points does have a bit of 3M sticky tape on it to make it easier to affix into place. This does not come with any mounting hardware except for this. You can pick up other types of mounting uh, for this if you wanted to, but they do not come in the box. Uh, right up here in the front, this is one of their easy connector points, uh, which I do really appreciate. So you don't actually have to pick these up separately and get them attached to the LED light strip. They already come pre-attached. If you get other TP-Link LED strips, they'll just connect up into this. You also have the ability to cut this to size. Right here, this is a cut indication, meaning if I want to make this shorter, I can cut right here. Each segment is made up of six LED nodes. And I say nodes because while this one right here is red, there's actually a second LED right next to it. These red LEDs are actually RGB LEDs, meaning that they consist of red, blue, and green to make several different color patterns. The one next to it is actually a pure white LED node, which unlike some other ones that I've tested in the past, allows you to have better color control for whites. It also gives you the ability to have up to 16 different color zones per LED strip, also giving you the ability to have millions of color combinations, as TP-Link says. You have a total of 96 individual LED nodes throughout the entirety of this particular light strip. And by that, I mean the two connection points giving you a total of 6.6 .6 feet of LED strip in the box because it already comes with two connected together. Bringing our LED light strip closer to the camera, you might see that there's a little sheen here and that actually is a rubberized epoxy coating that is on the top of this to help protect the LED bulbs. That also means that, well, it might be a little obvious that a cat kind of rolled on this before my filming. Uh, it does collect dust and hair. That's not to say that that is a bad thing, but it is just something that you're going to need to be aware of. Another thing that I consider with anything that's light oriented is, well, how warm does it get? Well, turning these up to maximum and white to make it as hot as I possibly could, I left it for about 30 minutes just to see, and then I came back and ran my hand uh, across the LEDs, and it's actually barely noticeable to the touch. If you're looking for a maximum lumen out of this, you're looking at 1400 lumens total. I've just been having this sit on red. That does not mean that it's the only color that you can do. As I said, this is RGB and there's a white LED node, but all of the fancy things that you can do with this, including color control, are all done through the application. Let's actually take a look at the application. This is the application for the TP-Link Casa Smart Light Strip multicolor. Here we can see I actually have it right up here at the top under lights. I do like that this is a new look and feel for the Casa TP-Link application, kind of breaking things up where we can see my lights are here, my smart plugs are all there, and then a smart switch there. So they kind of break things up together, which I like. And then they actually have a favorite, so that's gonna be your most selected devices there. Right here we have our TP-Link light strip. You can see that it is off, uh, is part of my home network. And uh, right there it even shows if it was on, it would indicate what is going on right there. So it would show you your brightness and so forth. Uh, clicking into our TP-Link, here we can see this is big old button, turn it on, turn it off. There's a nice animation that happens, letting you know, hey, something has been turned on. Up here, this is what I'm gonna call, and I incorrectly kinda label this uh, later on since behind the scenes, I don't film these in order. Um, this is not actually to segment your light strip. However, it is to have quick launch for color and brightness. So you can pre-program a bunch of different ones up there and simply tap on them. Instead of having to come through the color wheel, set your brightness and color, you can set a bunch of quick launches right from the top there. Uh, but we're gonna come back to our power. Here you can see it is letting me know color and then it's on 74% brightness. If I were to come into my effects very quickly, and I'm going to set an effect just so I can show you right here, it will tell you the effect name as well as the brightness of whatever you have going on. Right here, we have our brightness. So if I select this, it is a sliding scale from, from one to a hundred percent. So you could do anywhere in between that simply by dragging and dropping your indicator. Next, we have our weight. So this will allow you to, if you're just using a weight, make it a cooler white versus a warmer white. And again, this is a sliding scale. 
Uh, you can kind of see there, it lets you know the Calvin number right there. So if you want to dial that in exactly to what Calvin you'd like, you can do that from right there. We're gonna come down here to the bottom first quickly uh, before we get into the colors, because I know that's what you're really interested in, but we're gonna talk about some of the other things that we can do. Effects will be discussed when we talk about our colors, because there's kind of pre-programmed color manipulation that you can do through effects. You have the ability to schedule. So I can create a schedule where I can have this turn on or off at a specific day, and then I can select time. So if I'm doing a routine, let's say I wanna have this turn on at 11 a.m., but I want to do that only on the indicated days that are green, I can do that and then select save. And now I have created a routine. And from here, I have a routine toggle where I can say, hey, I don't wanna get rid of this routine, I just wanna turn it on or off. And I could do that by simply selecting that toggle. If I click into the routine, I can come all the way down here and select delete. Now, they call it scheduling, I call it routines, but it's the same idea. Just hit that plus sign and then you can add whatever you'd like. And we're going to select back and that's gonna bring us to our main screen here, again, because we left off on our white balance. Uh, next, we have usage. The usage I really like because you don't get this with a lot of smart LED strips, but it will show you your energy usage for today. So here you can see, I haven't had this on for all that much today uh, before filming. However, over the last seven days, it shows me my energy usage in kilowatts and then the total time that it was on. And then if we come over here, here's a 30 day total energy usage and then total time on over the past 30 days. Uh, here you can see some extra information right here, which is our savings per year. You can see I kinda don't keep this on all that often. It stays on for a couple hours as part of my Christmas lights. But that is our usage section. Like I said, effects and colors. We will actually cut out to a better view of the actual color usage and some of the things that you can do, as well as these up here, the pre-programmed smart areas, which I will call uh, segments later on. Here we have our color segment wheel. And then from here you can see I can just kind of drag this around. I don't just have to tap, but I can drag and the color will change. Notice that it kind of dynamically changes once I get to a spot, but these little in-between colors, not quite as much as the larger color changes, but that's kind of nice that it lets you do that. One of the cool things with this though, however, is the effects wheel. Now notice, we have our effects up here in place already, uh, but if we ever wanted to change one of these, we simply highlight it, hit that button, just like we did on the other page, and select delete, and that will allow us to remove it. Coming into color painting, this will allow us to manipulate the bulbs. Notice we have colors there. If I start touching these, I want this off. I want this off. Notice it's starting to shut down bulbs in the background there. Or, I could say turn on, and I want it that color, that color, that color. I want that one to be that color, I want that one to be that color. Here I want blues over here. And notice we can change the color this way. And then we can hit save, and that'll save it as a color painting. I'm gonna select don't save because, well, I don't want to save it. We also have the ability to customize effects. Here's a bunch of effects. Let me show you what those look like before we start customizing them. Coming down. We've got our aqua right here, so we'll give that a second to load up. And then you can see aqua kind of has this nice color shifting from greens to blues. We're gonna bring our smartphone back into focus. Might be a little hard to see, but this is bubbling cauldron. We're gonna give that a second to load up. Might be a little different, a uh, little diff difficult to notice subtle changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in and make the brightness 100% so that while we're messing with the effects, you'll get an idea of how they look, minus the fact that there's Christmas stuff in the background there. Moving on, we have candy cane, selecting that. You'll notice that it's going to shift from white to red. This is a very good Christmas color. Uh, a little tricky to see, because uh, you could see the bursts of red are a little shorter, uh, so they're not getting picked up as well on the camera, but I do assure you they're there, and they do look rather nice. Moving along with our effects, we have Christmas. This is the one that I generally keep up because, well, it's red and green. It's a little more noticeable than the candy cane and a little more subdued, but you do see that you have a little splash of green in there uh, ever so slightly. Moving on, we have flicker. So this is supposed to mimic a flickering candle. Again, this is another one that's a little subtler, so the camera might not be able to pick it up as well. Moving on, again, might be hard to see the screen, but Grandma's Christmas. So this is another Christmas style one. We'll let that load up. 
And there you see, it's, it's slowly moving along. But there is a light. And there's the other one. So what this is going to do is kind of mimic the old colored light bulbs, like the really fat ones that burn through so much electricity. And you could see that kind of based on how they look up there on my wall. So you've got an orange one, a blue one, here's a white one, and it's representing that large uh, bulb that you would have seen. Now we're gonna let that do one more and then we're gonna come along to the next effect as you see it moving across the chain there. And there we go, there's our green. Gonna bring this back into focus because the next one we're gonna do is Hanukkah. And here we go. That is a representation of Hanukkah. I'm assuming it's the menorah, but I'm not familiar enough to kind of get an idea of why that is colored the way it is. Next we have Haunted Mansion. Gonna bring that into focus, select Haunted Mansion. And there you go. Haunted Mansion kind of has like this lightning effect. So you see it's spooky, lightning, you have this kind of hidden away and it kind of adds some ambiance. You get some thunder going in there, it'd be even better. Uh, next, we're gonna come up to icicles, which might be a little hard to see with the flashing in the background, but there you go. Here's your icicles. It's a very light blue, uh, kind of shimmering a little bit. You saw that hopefully a little bit on the tips over there, but it's kind of pushing through. There you go, you can see some color waving through it. Uh, next, we have lightning. So that's a little different than the Haunted Mansion, because this one doesn't do it as often. So I can actually sit here and talk for quite some time before this actually goes off. And this is one of the things with this particular one that kind of annoys me, is I wish it did it a little more frequently. However, in the editing function, we can change that a bit. So we'll talk one more time, see if I can get one more lightning effect in here before I move on to the next one. But that's the thing with lightning, it is very random, so you might not notice it. All right, doesn't look like we're getting another lightning effect. So we're gonna bring this back up into focus and do ocean. So here you go, ocean effect. Switches a little bit between some teals and some lighter colors, kind of wafting ocean. Coming back up into focus, we have our rainbow effect. So here you go, it's gonna throw a single color across uh, but do this in rapid succession so that you get this rainbowed effect. Coming back up, we're going to do raindrop. And there we have what raindrops look like, kind of just scattered little lights, kind of blues and whites, just dripping around. It's, it's a pretty cool thing without having to worry about strobing effects. Uh, next we have, right here, we have spring. And then spring, here we go. It's a green kind of pulsating through an orange and red, letting you see those spring-like colors. Again, Christmas motif up there, but tis the season when I'm doing this and generally when I have an LED light strip thrown across the back here. And then last but not least, we have right here, Valentine's. So selecting this, as you might imagine, is a very red background. Uh, notice though that they are throwing some whites in there to kind of give more of a purpley effect. Uh, so instead of being a harsh, blood red, you're getting more of a reddish pink uh, for that particular effect. Now, I'm going to leave that effect on, and then we're gonna come back up to our, if I can get that to focus, customize effects. Here, we're going to select our lightning, and then do next. So right here, you can see, here is the color palette that this particular lightning is doing. And there we saw a lightning strike in the background. So this is the color palette that it uses. Uh, we can select the random color right there and select save, or I can hit next and we can change the name. And there we go, it's doing lightning effect more often because I'm messing with this, there we go. Finally get to see those effects, probably should have said a strobe warning, but we can change the colors and I can hit save after giving it a different name so that the lightning effect could have more purples in it and things of that nature. And we're just gonna hit X, uh, which will bring us back to the Valentine's one, which is the one we last left off on. So that is all of the color manipulation that we can do for the TP-Link LED strip here. Coming back into the application, that's everything that you can do to control the LED light strip. But if we come up here to the sprocket icon, if I select this, this is actually going to bring us into the settings for the device itself. So right here, first up, 
First and foremost, we have TP-Link Light Strip. Uh, that is actually the naming convention. You can come in here, give it a new name. We can even come in here and select a different image if we wanted to. We can also upload an image from our camera's album or take a picture right now uh, and have that as the icon, letting us know exactly what that light strip is or where that light strip is placed. Default statuses, these are really good. So on from app, it will resort last on state. Now we can change that if we want to, uh, but we do need to have uh, presets, which we did talk about before when we were talking about the colored areas. And then light strip will go to selected state when turned on from the app on from power source, which is touching the button. And here it will come to the on state. Coming down, we have featured tutorials, device info, and then placement guide. And that's all that you really have under here. So you can control how it functions from the app and then how it functions from the button push. And then we come back and that's really all that we can do for the light strip via the settings portion of the application. Now, if we come back, I did mention that TP-Link has recently revamped and redone their application to make things kind of nicer. Here you can see there is a routine section right up there. You also have cameras now as a separate section. I don't have any cameras. You have smart. So this is again, smart actions. So this is a scene that I created. You can have actions, which in this case, I have one set up where if I toggle my smart switch, uh, you can check that out in the corner there. It will turn on a smart plug uh, that's over a workbench and then featured animation. So if you didn't want to make your own, you can select a scene right from here. Activity, this is going to show you everything that kind of happens. Uh, right now you can see not much has happened uh, with my activity. And then you've got an account setting right there. Uh, that little red dot there means that there is something that needs to happen. Chances are it's a firmware update for something. So you always wanna make sure that you go in there and check that out. And that has been everything that can be done with the TP-Link Casa Smart LED Light Strip Multicolor. There you saw, there's a lot that you can do with the application for the TP-Link Light Strip here. In fact, those effects are some of the more interesting things that I've seen for an LED light strip. There's a lot of customization from the application for this light strip, which I greatly appreciate. Now, one thing that I always like to do when I'm testing electronics in any way, shape or form, including uh, light strips such as this, is power usage. Yes, you get a general power usage statement on the box, but myself, I came from a condo that everything ran on electricity, so I was very sensitive to how much power something actually used. Well, the LED light strip here, while just idling, meaning it's plugged in and connected to your Wi-Fi, but the LED lights are not on, it uses negligible amounts of power, meaning my reader could not even pick it up. Using red at 50%, because that is what uses the least amount of power I found, but red at 50%, used six watts. Red at 100% used 11.8 watts of power, while doing white at 100% used 17.1 watts of power. Now, also I decided to test one of the effects and that Christmas one that I mentioned before at 40%, which is what I generally keep this at because the LEDs are super bright. Well, that Christmas effect at 40% used only 3.5 watts of power, which is great for something like this. Now, I have tested other LED strips in the past and this one actually uses less power than that other strip. Granted, it doesn't have some of the effects controls that that one had, but the power usage is lower. One other thing that I like to test with anything that connects to Wi-Fi and then powers another device, in this case, LEDs, well, what happens if power is lost and then restored? Well, in the case of the, the TP-Link light strip here, it remembers the last state that it was in, meaning if the LED lights are on and you lose power, when power is restored and it connects itself back to Wi-Fi, LED lights come back on. If the LED lights are off and power is restored, the LEDs will be off when power is restored. Now, the one thing that I will say, and I'm gonna power this off and then power it back on momentarily, is that when power is restored, even if it is in the off state, once it reconnects to the Wi-Fi, we're gonna give this a second, it does a little flash to let you know that, hey, I've reestablished the connection with the Wi-Fi. So in the middle of the night, if these are off and power is lost, you will see some very strange lights if you're not expecting them once power is restored. Not a deal breaker, but just something I want you to keep in mind. Pricing for the TP-Link light strip here 
is comparable to other light strips of its size. It's not going to be the cheapest. That market's pretty much dominated by one manufacturer, but it's also not the most expensive. And for me, the simplicity and what you get with the Casa TP-Link Smart Light Strip Multicolor here makes it well worth checking out even at a slightly not rock bottom price. Because of all of the functionality, ease of setup, ease of additions to the LED strip, I highly recommend checking out the, the TP-Link Casa Smart Light Strip Multicolor, especially if you want to liven up a room or get some better track lighting under some cabinets like I did. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.